ES Audio. Hello, I'm John Weeks, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, does the UK government really have a plan for green energy? But first, as the search continues for Ocean Gate's missing Titan submersible, banging sounds have been picked up by a Canadian aircraft's sonar devices. As a result, search efforts have been relocated, and there are currently an international array of ships and planes involved in the race against time. An underwater robot has also been searching in the vicinity of the Titanic wreck. Dr Jamie Pringle, a reader in forensic geosciences at Keele University, believes the environment in the deep ocean could have an impact on how and where the submersible travels. At some point between the surface and the bottom, they've had some sort of failure communications normally. But then obviously with that water column being so thick, water isn't like a big bowl of water. It will be stratified, have different layers of salinities and temperatures. So if, if the sub's in somewhere in that water column, it could be drifting around in a non-predictable way. The vessel's two communication systems stopped working about an hour and 45 minutes after the Titan submerged, and it's thought it could run out of oxygen by Thursday morning. Now, it looks like people might be using artificial intelligence to automate responses on a site that's used to train AI. In a complicated twist, researchers in Switzerland believe people paid to complete small tasks, such as data validation or simple transcriptions, on Amazon's Mechanical Turk site, are actually using AI to complete the tasks. Among those tasks is collecting and annotating huge amounts of data required for training machine learning models. The researchers from Switzerland's EPFL University estimate that 33 to 46 percent of crowd workers on MTurk used large language models, aka AI, in a text production task. A group of MPs in the UK say the government doesn't have a plan to decarbonise the power system within the next 12 years. The Public Accounts Committee said no overarching delivery plan exists to reach the goal of ensuring all electricity comes from low carbon sources by 2035. The committee said that a delivery plan would provide confidence to the private sector so it can secure investments towards greener energy production. In a report, the committee also said it's sceptical that plans for expanding nuclear, solar and wind power are credible. It also said the Department for Energy Security and Net Zero needs to publish information on when and how the cost of decarbonising the power sector will impact bill and taxpayers in the delivery plan due later this year. The team behind a pre-booking travel app for disabled and elderly passengers called Passenger Assistance say they aim to revolutionise accessible rail travel. It comes after app makers TransReports ranked London as one of the world's least accessible cities, saying only a third of stations provide step-free access. The app enables disabled and older passengers to book assistance easily without the need for phone calls and booking forms, etc. Um, very quick and easy to use and is rolled out across the whole of the UK rail network. That's Emma Partlow, Trans Reports Accessibility and Inclusion Manager. I'm a disabled person myself, so prior to the app existing, I used to have to stand and request assistance at a station. It could be very early in the morning and I had to explain my um, disability and my access needs to a stranger. Um, with the use of the app, the unique experience that I get now is I book my assistance and they know I'm coming. Trans Report says older networks such as Paris, New York and Beijing are also among the worst for disabled passenger infrastructure. An environmental campaigner begins her fight at the Supreme Court in London today in a case which could have implications for the future of fossil fuel exploration in the UK. 59-year-old Sarah Finch challenged Surrey County Council's decision to allow a well six miles from where she used to live in Red Hill in Surrey to be extended. So far, she's lost fights in the High Court and Court of Appeal, but argues that council bosses failed to assess the indirect greenhouse gas impacts and believes there should have been an assessment of the downstream greenhouse gas emissions, aka the emissions released when the oil is used. Council bosses who gave Horse Hill Developments permission to extend drilling at the site dispute Ms Finch's claim. Coming up, Mars, Venus and the Moon visible in the night sky. And Samsung is now letting users fix their own phones. Why not hit follow and give us a rating during the break? Music. 
Welcome back. Mars, Venus and the Moon will all be visible together in the night sky from London tonight. It may be possible to view with the naked eye, but binoculars or a telescope will hopefully provide a more visible close-up view of the trio. Space.com says Mars will be close to Venus, about 4 degrees to its upper left, but not as bright, and you're more likely to need binoculars to see the red planet. A study suggests having a natural pregnancy after having a baby by IVF is far from rare. Research from University College London's EGA Institute for Women's Health suggests that one in five women conceive naturally after having a baby via fertility treatment. Lead author Dr Annette Thwaites said this is in contrast with widely held views by women and health professionals that it's a highly unlikely event. It means not all women seeking and undergoing fertility treatment are absolutely or permanently infertile. And finally, Samsung is now offering up repair kits for its users. If you own an S20, S21 or S22 smartphone, you can now buy a kit directly from Samsung for £24.80. The tech giant will also sell you guaranteed official replacement parts rather than lower quality parts you might get at a local repair shop. However, when crunching the numbers, it turns out by replacing the screen on an S22, for example, you'd only save around £30 doing it yourself compared with sending your phone to Samsung instead. You're up to date. Come back at four o'clock for the Leader Podcast for the latest news and analysis from the Evening Standard. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. See you then.